Welcome to my first official tutorial for Bitwig, and I am very excited about this, even though the topic that we're starting off with may not be the most exciting. But I really want to begin with creating a solid foundation with all of the basics, and then progress on to the more fun and interesting things like working with the included instruments, effects, mixing, sampling, and creating, creating our own synthesizers, samplers, and audio effects with Polygrid. There's a lot, a lot to cover. And I'm really looking forward to future tutorials. I think this is going to be a fun and creative journey. So if you're new to Bitwig or just curious about it, I definitely recommend sticking around and checking this out, even though, again, I said this is probably not the most exciting thing. But even if you are a intermediate or seasoned user, you still may want to stick around because there may be some details in here that you weren't quite aware of that you wish you would have known after finding them out. So with that, we'll go ahead and jump into this. And here we have the default view when you create a new project in Bitwig. And it may seem like a lot going on, but if you are a minimalist like myself, things can be simplified very quickly. So I could press I and hide the inspector D to close out the device panel. Then I can press L to hide the clip launcher and B to hide the browser. We now have a very streamlined and clean view. So if this is the kind of view that you prefer to start off with, kind of more of a blank slate, then you can easily hide all of your panels. And then one thing that you could do is come up to file in the upper left hand corner and then choose to save this as a template. Just give it a name, your author, click OK. And that's going to be available to you in your templates area. And then what you could do is if we come up to the Bitwig logo here and access the dashboard, we can then come to our settings, the behavior. And then here we have the option to choose to use a template for new projects. So when we select this, we can then click on the ellipsis. And then we can see here, I've already created a template for myself. So if I'd like to have this be the default that opens up whenever I launch Bitwig, I can select it here. Let's close out of our dashboard. Now regarding the layout of Bitwig Studio, it's divided essentially into four main areas. Up at the very top, we have our header, and then we have our menu and transport area. We have the main body in the center, and then at the very bottom, we have the footer. And of course, the main body view will change depending on what panels we have open. And let's just start in the upper left corner and make our way down. And I actually have another project open here. We can see we can have multiple projects open within Bitwig at a time, and we can see them listed here. Just take note that, for instance, you see this activate audio engine. If you want to switch to another project, you'll need to activate the audio engine for that project. Otherwise, you won't have any audio. But for this tutorial, let's go ahead and switch to this other one. I have a clip added and an instrument or device as well. So we'll take a look at things here. So moving towards the center of our header, we have the Bitwig logo that we've already seen we could use to access the dashboard. We then have a notification area. This is going to be on by default. So notifications, you'll see a little pop-up with text giving you notifications about various things. If you'd prefer not to see that pop-up, then you can click in the circle. And then once it's hollow on the inside or clear on the inside, that will disable the notifications from popping up. Then this circle will just change colors to kind of give you an idea of what sort of notification is available available for viewing. I'm going to turn that back on. We then have a full screen button and I'm going to go ahead and click that. And let's just finish out the tutorial in this mode. We have our restore before we went into full screen. We had minimize. Then we have closing out Bitwig. Now, if we were to right click in the header area, we have a few options for the scaling and display profile. So if we'd like to increase the scaling for our interface, we can just click on that and just take this up. So very cool, decrease. A lot of DAWs and applications require you to restart here. We could just make these changes immediately within Bitwig. Now, right clicking again, we have different display profiles. So if you're working on a single display, which is, which is large or small, you have a tablet setting, a dual display, and so on down here. Let's close that out. We next have our menu and transport area, which we'll take a closer look at in future tutorials. For instance, when we talk in detail about the transport settings, but for now, just be aware that we have a lot of flexibility in what we can see here. So any of the buttons that have these downward arrows, we have a drop down menu that's going to pop up and we can see this has the standard file 
settings or options. We can save, open, new project, and so on. Uh, but what's really cool about Bitwig is that we have these pins here. So if we'd like to pin any of these actions to the menu area, then we can just click on the pin. So new project, for instance, once I click that, we can see that there. So any of these, let's click on the play menu here. So if we'd like to have a button for automation right, we can click on the pin and we can see that that pops up above our overdub. We can see it up above. So this provides us with a lot of options and the ability to have a really clean menu area up above. We have add. So if we're gonna be working with tracks and we'd like to add instruments or audio tracks, effects tracks, we could even pin these as well. So we could see that here. And we also have the ability to see the shortcuts that are tied to these different actions. Then coming to the edit, we have other options that we can pin as well. So coming back over to the left, we have the play, stop, record, automation. We have a CPU usage display. And if we click on this, then we have a DSP performance graph that we could take a look at if we're experiencing any issues or just are curious about how much the system is being taxed. We then have our disk usage meters here, our tempo. We can click, hold and drag up or down or double click to manually put in a value, our time signature, our play cursor position, our metronome, which we can activate by clicking, loop, we can activate here, punch in and punch out. Then we have our add, which we've seen, undo, redo. And the last thing I wanna mention about this area is that some of these buttons will change depending on what we have selected. So if I click on the event here, our MIDI, we can see that we now have a button for clip. And once we click on that, there's a bunch of different actions that we can take or apply to this clip. If I select our FM4 device synthesizer, then we can see that this changes to device and we have a couple other options here. So clicking on this, we can group, toggle active, low default preset, and so on. Now coming back to the left, we have our inspector, and this is going to update to show us more detailed information about whatever we have selected. So right now we have our FM4 synth device selected, so we can see a lot of information on what's going on with it, modulation assignments, and so on. If I were to select our clip here, then we can see that that changes. Our track, it updates again. We could do things like changing the color of our track, and the clip contained within it. And if we double click on the clip here to open up the editor at the bottom, the edit panel, and our first MIDI note is selected. So we can see information on it as far as the standard information, its start position, its length. We can mute that note. We can choose a specific MIDI channel. We can see the key, its velocity, velocity spread. Now, another a really cool thing is that we have operators and expressions that we can make use of when we have a MIDI note or group of MIDI notes selected. So starting with the operators here, we have a chance, and by default, this is gonna be on 100, 100%. So this is gonna kind of determine how often this note is gonna play. If I were to click and drag this down, then we take that percentage for the chance down. Now this ties in with the show note expressions button here, and this is on. By default, that's going to be off but if we click on this button and take that up, then we can see that adjustments that we make within the inspector are going to be reflected here. So coming to our chance, let's be sure that this note is selected and let's take that down and then select our chance. And we can see that that's been lowered here. And then as I increase here, we'll notice in the inspector that that is going to return back to the default of 100%. So we have our velocity, timbre, pressure, panning, gain, and again, these tie in with the expressions down below, our gain, panning. So we can actually apply panning to each individual MIDI note or group of notes, our pitch, timbre, and pressure. So if we show the pan view and then make an adjustment here, click, hold, and drag up, we can see that this changes to be reflected in our edit panel. We can also come here and make the adjustment Double-clicking on that, we take it back to the default. Let's click on that MIDI note. 
and we can see that our panning has returned to 0% here. And of course, I'm going to do a detailed tutorial on the operators and expressions because these are really things that are awesome and cool to know to really experiment with getting creative in your production. But for now, let's switch back to the device panel. And something else really cool to be aware of is that while we have our device, the FM4 synth selected, notice in the inspector, we have show help. And then when we click on this, we can see a help menu for the FM4. And this is by far the best help system that I have ever seen. So we can see a description for the different parameters that are selected. If we choose our oscillator sec section, then we can see details about each parameter and this functions in real time. So I can actually make an adjustment here and experiment based on the description and hear what these changes are going to do, which I think will help to reinforce your learning and speed up the learning process. First is the traditional help material that you'll just read in a PDF format or whatever, just standard text. This is very dynamic and very useful. I think it's just an incredible help system. So we can select the output sec section and see information for this, the mixer. So this is just absolutely incredible in my opinion. Let's close this out. Now, if you don't have your inspector open to click the show help here while your device is selected, you can click on the question mark to access it. Uh, you can also right click on the device and show item help as well. So you've got several options for accessing the help section. So making our way back up to the top, we have the clip launcher area, and this is another topic that we're going to visit in future tutorials because this definitely deserves more time to be spent with it. Just know that it is available here and we can show or hide by clicking on the button here in the left corner. We can also press L on our QWERTY keyboard to hide that. To the right of that, we can show and hide our arrange view. If we turn that off, then we're going to see the clip launcher again. One of them does need to be shown. So we'll leave the clip launcher off for the rest of the tutorial. Now in this area, we'll see all of our track headers and some of the options here. We can see our track name. We have record arm, our solo and mute. We then can view our automation lanes by clicking on this button here. So if you'd like to add a lane, then you can always click on the drop down menu here. This is for our FM4 device. So these are all of the different parameters that we can automate. So if we'd like to add automation to our oscillator one frequency offset, for instance, we could just click once on that. And now we can see we have a lane for that setup. But let's go ahead and close that out. We then have a level meter for our audio signal. If we would like to add a new track, then we can click on the plus button here. And so we could start off with audio effects, an instrument or note effects. Coming up to the top, we have the add button, which we've seen briefly before. So we could add an audio track, effects, group track, and so on. Now at the very bottom, we have our master track. And then here in the bottom left hand corner, we have different controls to show or to choose what will be shown within this area here. So we have show input out output routing. Once I activate that, now we can see our ins and our out assignments coming there. Now we can choose to use large track height or small. We then have show our effects tracks, which is going to be on by default. And we have show deactivated tracks. Now coming over all the way to the right here in the bottom right hand corner, we have automation follows clip editing setting, which we can activate and deactivate by clicking here. We then have our resolution setting for the grid. So we could click on that and then click, hold and drag up and down to make assignments. We can choose whether we want the grid to be adaptive. Um, but one really cool thing about this is that we can use the comma and period on our QWERTY keyboard to change the resolution for our grid. So I'll press the comma and you can see we changed to 132, 164, pressing the period, we then come back. So I think these are handy key commands to be aware of. We then have our snap, which we can engage and disengage here. And finally, we have our follow. So with this engage, the arrange view will follow along with the position of our playback cursor. Within our main arrange view, we can view all of our clips and audio recordings. Coming to the top here, we can click, hold and drag down to zoom out, drag up to zoom in, 
and then pulling to left or right, we can change the horizontal view. If we right click on the beat grid, then we have a few options that we can change. For instance, if we'd like to see a real time ruler, then we can see in seconds and minutes up above. Let's right click and take that back off. We can set our loop region with the bar here. So click, hold and drag to set either end. We can also, while we have the pencil active, click, hold and drag to define a new region. Now we can also click on the bar itself and drag that to a new location. So once we activate our loop function within the transport, then it's going to loop for this region that we've set. Now we have a handful of tools that we can make use of. By default, we're gonna be on the arrow, which is gonna allow us to select and move items like so. But clicking on this drop down menu, we have some other options. So we can use the time selection tool, pen tool, eraser, and the knife tool. So you'll notice that these have key assignments one through five on your QWERTY keyboard. So if I press number five, you'll see that our arrow changes to the split and we can come up and make cuts to our clip here. I'll press one to come back to the arrow, select, and we can see that this has then been split. Let's control Z to undo those splits. Now let's come down to the footer and take a look here. So we can choose between our layouts. By default, we're gonna be in the arrange. These are the three options that we have for our layout. So within the arrange, we have a certain group of buttons here that we can make use of to choose the panel that we see. So we can choose the editor, which is tied to E on the QWERTY keyboard. We have automation, which is tied to A on the QWERTY keyboard. Then we have our device panel, which is tied to D on our QWERTY keyboard. And then we have the mixer, which is tied to M. So within the arrange view, we can choose from these buttons here. Now, if I press tab, then we can switch to the mix view. You can see that that's highlighted. Now you, we could also just click on the word mix and within the mix window are options for the panels below change. So we have the editor that we can view or we can view the automation panel or the device panel. Now, if I press shift and tab, then we can switch to the edit view. And within the edit view, we can view our device panel or our mix panel or no panel at all if you'd really like to have as much real estate as possible for editing your MIDI. And of course, we could also press I to close out the inspector, B to close out our browser. And I think this just looks absolutely gorgeous. It's a playground for MIDI fun. So let's shift and tab, and actually just regular tab to come back to our arrange. And of course, we'll, we will be spending more time talking about the mix and edit layouts in detail in coming tutorials. Uh, but for now, let's start to wrap this up. And just one last thing about the footer is, this is really cool because you should pay attention to the area down below because when we hover, you'll notice in the footer down below here, we're gonna see fields that will pop up depending on what we're hovering over. And this is gonna give you guidance as to what could be done. So we can click, you see the first field, click select a ranger clip. We can drag it, control click, will remove from section selection and double click will make visible. Now, if we were to come to the device panel and say I hover here, then we can see that this is oscillator one mod. We can see it's setting at 67.5%. We see the available options, adjust value, control click to type value, double click set to default, triple click to type a value. Let's come up to our track header and then we can see here we have select instrument track, drag instrument track, remove from selection, show devices, double click. So anytime you're lost, just remember to pay attention. This is going to give you information on essentially any parameter and button that you hover over. It's gonna tell you what it is, what its setting is, and what your options are. So another tremendous help section within Bitwig. And to finish out, we will take a look at the browser. So we could access the browser by clicking on the folder button here, or I'm just gonna press B, which is the default key for this. Uh, I'll press D to close out our device panel as well. Now we start off on the devices. 
And here we can see all of the devices that we have, and this is essentially our instruments, third-party VST instruments, our note effects, audio effects, so everything here. And we can sort by collection, location, and we have category. So let's come back to the location and then move on to the next tab here. We have our presets, we have our samples, we have our multi samples, music, clips, and files where we can access files on our directory. And here I have set up so that I can easily access my sample, my own personal sample library here. We can see my drum samples, field samples, etc. But let's come back to the device. And then next in line next to our folder, we have the project info. So we could put in a title, artist, original artist, and so on. Here we could put in notes in this blank area or lyrics for a song, whatever we'd like. We have our sections, our scenes. We have files, anything that you've recorded, plugins. We then next in line have our input output. We then have our mappings. Let's come back to the devices and I'll press to close that out. And finally, we have this keyboard icon. And if we click on this, we can bring up a virtual keyboard. And we can actually use this to trigger our devices. We have several different modes for this. We can choose here. And while this is active, I can actually press my touch screen on my laptop. And let's close that out. Select our device. So pressing my touch screen, I can actually trigger the device. So this is really cool. And again, several different modes to choose from. Okay, and so we will wrap up here. This has gone on for quite a while, but I hope that if you're just getting started in Bitwig or if you're curious about Bitwig, this has answered some of the questions that you may have had and given you more information. And hopefully you've seen some things here that will help to make your workflow and process quicker. Okay, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment below. And otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.